Hello everyone, and welcome to the Spore Marker and Partners YouTube channel. My name is Mitchell Parsonage, and today I'm going to show you a free Revit plugin designed by Dyroots called Family Revisor. I will leave a link below to the download section of their website if you like the tool and want to grab it for yourself. If you would like to know how to download and install in a bit more detail, you can check out the first video in this series called One Filter, which goes into a little more detail on that process. Let's get started with Family Revisor. Family Revisor is a free Autodesk Revit add-in to manage Revit families as well as work sets. Taking a look at their website, we can see some of the features that are available to us. We can export and save our families to a folder or subfolder. We can add a prefix and or a suffix to a family name or type name. We can find and replace family names or type names. And we also get a work set management tool which allows you to modify work sets by categories and by rules and allows you to create additional work sets as well. Once the tool has been downloaded and installed, it will appear in your Die Roots tab. Off to the side, I've got Family Revisor. So let's look at the user interface to start with. Again, similar to the other tools, we've got the modal window, which allows you to double click the word Family Revisor to collapse the tool and allows you to continue working in your model until you're ready to double click again and bring everything back up. The tool is split into three tabs, an exporter, an editor, and then a work sets management tool. Let's start with the selection options. We have two options here, all families and selected families. All families will give you a category list of everything that you have in your project. It will allow you to expand those categories and have a look at the families and expand those families to have a look at the types. You can tick the categories that you would like to get a list of the families that you would like to export. The other option is selected families. Selected families cannot be chosen after the tool has been launched. So if I minimize it, select families, come back to my tool, I don't have the option to change to selected families. So what I need to do is I need to pre-select my families before I go and open the tool. When I pre-select my families and open the tool, it will default to selected families, tick the categories for me and give me only the items that I have selected. In addition to this, I have a type selection option, which allows me to select elements by category or by family name and type name, which gives me a little bit more of a detailed breakdown of the information that I have. Also have the ability to change the category type to distinguish between model and annotation categories, which is also very useful. Off to the right hand side, I've got my selected families region over here, where I have got a root folder, which allows me to designate the file path to the location I would like to export these families to. And I've also got a backup folder, which I can also change the path to, but it will create a default path for you to the backup folder created in the family revisor folder. For this example, I'm going to export doors, furniture, and speciality equipment. You'll notice down at the bottom, you've got a delete backup families tick box. I will explain this in just a second. So once I have decided what families to export, very simply, I can just say save families save to root folder which is my destination that i set and i will say save families if i have a look at my folder which i have set i will see that the families start to come through i get a progress bar up at the top which tells me how the families are currently looking in terms of whether they have been exported or not once complete i will get families actions are now complete and i can close that down and i now have my families exported to my folder if i open my backup folder I will see that I don't have anything in there currently. For the purposes of this example, I'm going to export exactly the same information again. And I just want to show you what DiRoots is doing in the background. I will leave the delete backup families unchecked for now. So I'll say save families. And I'm going to open both of these so that we can see this in action. So we'll see that the families here get exported and they get appended with 0001 as is very common for saving Revit files. Once that process is complete, it'll actually take those backups and it will send them to the backup folder that gets created. This is where the delete backup families comes in handy. This folder of backups can obviously get quite big if mismanaged. So when I export my families, I can say delete backup families and I'm gonna save the same group of families once again. And again, I will open both of these. So you'll notice that what it will do is it will create backups again. Once those backups are done, it will move them to the backup folder. 
This time, however, once the backups have been moved to the backup folder, they will automatically be deleted as well, keeping your system a bit cleaner. Okay, let's move on to the editor section. The editor section allows you to look for loaded families or system families, model or annotation categories, and you can search via family name and type name. You can find and replace families and you can also create prefixes and as well as suffixes. For example, let's say that I wanted to take everything that had M underscore and I wanted to replace that with SA underscore, for example. In my find and replace section, I can type M underscore and I can say find all. After a short moment, you'll see that it will highlight all the families which have M underscore and nothing else. With those families highlighted, I can go to the replace section and I can type SA underscore and I will say replace all. Notice how it only replaces all of the ones that I specified. So all of the M underscores get SA and you can see that you've got a little yellow pencil here. That means that the modification has happened in the family revisor, but it has not yet happened in your physical project yet. To get the changes to transfer through to your project, you need to go and update your model. So I can say update model now. And after a short while, I will get a message saying that the changes have applied successfully. If I now go and look at an item like casework, which had M underscore, I will see that it has been replaced with SA underscore. I could go and export these families now with the SA underscore rather than the M. Something that I can also do is I can add a prefix and a suffix. This is really nice because I can do one of two things. I can either select information by clicking and dragging, enter a prefix, let's call it temp, and then I can choose to apply that prefix to the selected items only or to all of the families in this entire list. If I say selected, you will see that it applies only to the elements that I have selected. For the suffix, I will put test, and for this one, I will say all. Notice how for all, it does not matter whether I have that family selected or not. It will go through and it will append the word test to the ends of every single family that I have in my project. Again, the changes have been actioned inside of Family Revisor, but not yet in my model. So to affect that change, again, I update my model. This is a very fast working tool as after about 10 to 15 seconds, all of those changes have been applied to my physical model. And then finally, we have the work sets tab. Now, if I click on work sets right now, it will tell me that I need to enable work sharing in this model and try again. So if you have not got work sharing enabled, you will get a message telling you that you need to enable it. I'm going to very quickly just enable work sharing and I'm not gonna really create anything. I'm gonna leave everything standard. And then I'm gonna head back to my directs. I'm gonna go to my work sets section. On the right hand side, again, I've got a list of all of my families that can be applied to work sets. I've got a filter selection here where I can look for elements in the entire model, in the active view only, and I can also filter down my categories to specific ones. I can use this tool to create my work sets as well. So I will create a new work set here and I will call it furniture for example. And now what I can do is I can filter down my elements to furniture. I can click and drag my mouse down to select all of these items and I can just change their work set to furniture at once. And I can update my model to affect that change. And if I go and take a look at any furniture items, I will see that they have been applied. You have a very powerful ability here called the rules manager, which allows you to set rules which are consistent throughout your projects. For example, I will create a new rule and the rule name will be, let's just call it doors for now. I can filter my categories once again, so I will select doors. I would like to filter by, let's say the type name. When the type name equals, let's use the bottom one for example. So when the type name equals 9152134 millimeters, click apply. I want those doors to be selected. So if I tick this doors, notice how it will only display the families which meet this criteria. I also have an AND rule so I can continue to build this rule manager. I'm gonna create an, an additional rule. 
and I will call it doors 2. I'm going to select doors 2 and again I can start to define my rules. So I will filter just the doors and I can filter by a number of different items. For this I will again filter by the type name. In this case I will use contains. So when the type name contains 1500 for example I want to select those items. So if I go and tick my doors too, I will notice that I will only get those doors that contain 1500 in the type name. Now the really powerful thing about this is that you can actually save this. So I'm gonna save this, it's, it creates an XML file. And what that allows me to do is use that in future projects. If I restart my family revisor, if I'm working on a project which does not have my rules applied, I can go open and I can select my Family Revisor Rules XML file. And those rules that I created will be populated into my Rules Manager. And I will be able to immediately apply those to the items that I want. Family Revisor is a great, fast and easy to use tool for working with Revit families as well as work sets. That is everything that I wanted to show you with regards to the family revisor. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. See you in the next video.